Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thomas and uh, Dr. J. Arora. Uh, now that the uh, we have heard uh, what the OT protocols are, we'll go for the uh, the the fluid, the instruments. What all things can cause lead to end of thermitis if we are not careful? The incidence of postoperative end of, end of thermitis ranges from 0.02 to 0.26 worldwide, and uh, in India it is reported to be 0.04 to 0.15 percent. And the source of infection in cluster endophthalmitis is typically exogenous and multifactorial. Even with the uh, proper use of preoperative uh, povidonidin and sterile precautions, the bacterial contamination of the fluid that comes out of the operating field is 31%, that is, in, that is reported. But not all these cases will uh, end up in endophthalmitis. The sources of uh, infection uh, from the consumables, usually it is from the intraocular solutions. It can be the irrigating fluid, the uh, viscoelastic devices and drugs and uh, even the tripen blue dye. Contaminated operating room environment, mainly the ACs and uh, the, out, out the inlet, the air w w that is taken to the AHU. If there is a construction going on there, if there are a lot of dust, dust uh, uh, rising out of the um, uh, outside the AHU, all these can lead to a uh, contaminated OT environment. The FACO emulsification machine, previously we had the uh, inner tubings that was uh, supposed to lead to endophthalmitis, but inadequate cleaning and inadequate processing of the FACO tubings and the FACO probe can also lead to endophthalmitis. Contaminated in instruments which are inadequately processed. As uh, Dr. Girija mentioned, the instruments should be cleaned. When, should, when it should be cleaned, it should be cleaned immediately after surgery. We'll come to that later. Uh, even uh, local anesthetic drops has been reported to produce endophthalmitis. And uh, uh, IOLs preserved in solution, that also uh, was a cause of endophthalmitis as reported in literature. In all these cases of endophthalmitis, we were not able to identify the organisms. But however, in cluster endophthalmitis, the commonest organism that is reported is Pseudomonas aeruginosa and related species, Burkholderia, Enterobacter klebsiella has also been reported in cluster endophthalmitis. Staph epidermidis addition and biofilling formation on four types of IOLs have been studied, silicon, PMMA, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. And it has been found that, it has been reported that the biofilm growth occurred on all types, but the least in hydrophilic acrylic. Uh, cleaning. When we should clean the instruments after the surgery? Usually in most of the OTs, what we have seen is that, uh, suppose if there are about 10 cases, all the instruments after the surgery is kept there, and all the instruments are cleaned at the end of the surgical session. Uh, that is not proper because it has to be cleaned immediately after surgery. Why? To avoid the biofilm formation. Biofilm formation has got different stages. In the earliest stages, that is within minutes, if you can clean the instrument, you can get rid of the uh, organisms. Otherwise, it will get adherent, it will get, uh, accumulate all the extra, uh, extracellular uh, po pro polymer substrates, and all this becomes very hard and it gets. Uh, the, it gets lodged in the instruments. And if it is a cannulated instrument, it is very difficult to dislodge it from that instrument. Cleaning of instruments is important. And then all instruments should be dried before processing. Cannulae, it, all cannulae and all uh, hinged instruments has to be cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner. But care should be taken not to mix different types of instruments. Chromium plated instruments should not be mixed with titanium instruments. Because then there can be electrolytic deposition of uh, uh, electrolytes. And the instrument, the cannulae should be flush with uh, uh, distilled water. If you have got an air gun, that is good enough. And it should be later flushed with uh, air so that it is made completely dry. And always autoclave the uh, heat resistant instruments. There is no role for chemical sterilization in ophthalmology. And do not reuse an instrument uh, without sterilization. 
there are certain uh, uh, hospitals where cannulas, the um, uh, bimanual cannula are reused for uh, surgeries, but I mean that is not a uh, good trend. Consumables, that, that picture is shown, it is a real picture which happened in our hospital. You are lucky if you get a, a bottle like this. It is quite obvious. And uh, the quality of OVDs, irrigating fluids, type and blue, all these are very important and you should buy it from GMP certified, uh, good manufacturing practices, certified companies. And all irrigating uh, fluids or uh, uh, the, the type and blue, whatever uh, the consumables that you use, uh, one sample from that batch should be cultured and you should keep it documented. And then if the culture is negative, then you can use the, the uh, consumables from that particular batch. This is, this, uh, this also I have uh, got it from our hospital. This is a type and blue bottle and uh, uh, the, the end of time it is from this has been reported. Uh, we didn't use it, luckily we saw that deposits there. It happened in the uh, disposable cannula also and it grew aspergillus. Irrigating fluid, the best one is the collapsible bottle and uh, if you are using a plastic bottle like this, uh, most people put an airway there, but airway should not be kept at the bottom, it should be kept at the top above the fluid level. Uh, then the best uh, uh, technique to detect uh, colloids in the, in the fluid, in the irrigating fluids is to test by the Tyndall phenomenon. Physical inspection for uh, uh, Tyndall effect and broken seals and discoloration it should be uh, done and as I said before culture should be taken from each batch of these intraocular solutions. Instruments, if there is a uh, uh, outbreak of end of time it is you will have to culture even the cannulae and the uh, fluid that has been uh, washed out of the cannula, you can culture even the, if there is a Simco cannula, you can even cut the Simco cannula there in the uh, blood agar plate and you can culture it. The effluence from the tubings and as I said before, you should recycle, autoclave all the instruments before recycling. And there are, there were reports previously that uh, some of the sharp, instru sharp instruments can be sterilized in acetone or uh, even Cydex but that should never be done in an ophthalmic center. Phaco tubings, it's very important. Uh, when you are uh, using the, uh, uh, the recyclable tubings, you should do this helix test. Helix test is a, it's a tube uh, having 1.5 meter length and there at the end there is a, there is a uh, container where you can keep the uh, indicator and then do one cycle with this uh, device and that indicator if it uh, uh, doesn't, I mean if it, uh, if it shows a, uh, what is that, uh, the uh, process is proper, then you can assume that the vacuum cycle of your autoclave machine is proper. Finally, uh, this is an ethical question, if you get a case of endothalpitis from, from a consumable, should you report it? I think you should report it to your peer groups, warn them, warn them with the batch number that uh, I had a, even, not even end of, end of the if you, if you have a task or even a suspicious reaction, you should report it among your peer groups. But then care should be taken that you should supplement with uh, evidences. You should culture that and if you get a positive culture, well and good. Otherwise, this company can sue you for maligning their reputation. So be uh, wary of all these things and maintain a proper log of all OT procedures like the autoclave procedure. Need not get a printout. You can even the ordinary autoclave you can use a log uh, when, when have you started it, what is the temperature and uh, what is the holding time. All those things can be maintained, recorded in a book which will be of very use. All the sterilization indicators has to be um, kept properly and documented properly and the batch number and the details of all the consumables should be recorded properly and kept in your OT register. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating it. Thank you, Dr. Shashi. That was exhaustive and uh, we had a thorough knowledge of what goes in. Now with all the best practices in the OT, all the protocols in place and Everything that goes in have been taken care of. Still on the first post-operative day, we find 
that the patient has a corneal edema. The vision is not very good. The patient has some pain. The first response from the surgeon is, no, it can't be. It was an uncomplicated case. I took just 10 minutes for that and it can't be. So how do we differentiate between a TAS and an endophthalmitis?